Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we go down to Pine Ridge, I want to tell you about an experience a friend of mine had recently, one that a lot of us are already familiar with. Well, this friend went out to buy a package of Horlicks malted milk. The clerk told her that he had Horlicks, but he urged her to buy something that he said was just as good and cheaper in price. Well, my friend bought that cheaper substitute. She couldn't resist what she thought was a bargain. But one glass was all she drank. She found it just couldn't compare with Horlicks. What did she do? She took that cheap substitute back to the store and got a package of Horlicks instead. You won't catch me accepting a substitute again, she says now. Well, I guess we all make mistakes once in a while. But if we're not on guard against them, well, that's why we urge you to ask for and get Horlicks. You can get it at your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner are now traveling with their circus. They had a very successful Saturday and Sunday at Charleston. And today, we find them in the little city of Mount Ida. As we look in on the old fellows today, Lum is spending most of his time with Zenora, the bareback rider, with whom he has become very fascinated. Abner and Cedric Weehunt are sitting in the circus wagon, which they are using for office and headquarters of the circus. Listen. Oh, it's that disgustingest thing I ever seen. He's got old um so crazy about it, he don't know his right name right now. Yes, Mom. I, I thought Mr. Lum was, was in love with Miss Evelina Schultz, the school teacher over at Pine Ridge. Oh, he don't know who he is in love with, Cedric. I know him and her has been keeping company pretty steady. Yeah, yeah, I know they have. But this bareback rider is just swept him clean off on his feet. Mm-hmm. He'll do anything that she tells him to, regardless of what it is. Yeah, she's got him looking after the horses for her now. She has. <laughs> He spent about half his time around there curry combing them and breaking them and all that, plaiting their tails and mane and all those things he's had. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wish we'd get shut of Zenora and them horses. That's what I wish. Maybe Lom would spend a little time looking after the circus, then. Well, who's supposed to be the main boss around here anyway? You or Mr. Lum or Squaw? Well, Lum's supposed to be, but he ain't looking after things like he ought to. No. You know, he told Zenora that he owned a circus by himself. That's what he told her. Yes, sir. Uh, he told me to tell her that, too. Makes me such dad blame mad I can't hardly stand myself. Every time I get around him and her, why, he starts to give me orders. It's to show out in front of her. That's the only reason he does. Yes, sir. Me, too. Had me in that Saturday selling peanuts there in our main tent. <laughs> and me a half owner in the circus, too. Here comes Squire now. Uh-oh, yeah, yeah, well, he's disgusted with Lom, too. I think I better get out there and start carrying some more water for them elephants. They can drink more water than anybody I ever see. Howdy, Mr. Squire. Oh, yeah. Hello, Cedric. Uh, where about it, Abner? He's on the inside the wagon, man. Yeah, come on in, Squire. Oh, well, I, I couldn't see you in there, Abner. I've been looking for you. I want to have a little talk with you. Yeah, well, just sit down and make yourself at home. Uh, make yourself proper, Squire. Uh, where about it, Lom? Well, I don't know for sure, but I just might not bet that he's with Zenora wherever she's at. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it looks like that Zenora is taking up my now all long time. Oh, that's all he talks about. Zenora this and Zenora that. I'm so tired of hearing it. I, I, I wish I was be. Well, now, here it is, Abner. It might not time to open up the box over. We'll start selling tickets and nobody's out there to sell them. Well, I'll go find him in a minute and send him around there. Abner, I don't like to complain about the way things is going, but now, if Lum's going to manage a show, I do wish that he'd attend to it. That's the reason that I wanted you and him to travel with the show, was uh, so you could take part of the responsibilities off of me. But the way things are now, why, Lum's no help at all. He's got that bareback rider on his mind. Uh, does it look like we're going to have much of a crowd this afternoon? Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's a big crowd around there. Ought to do well here now, and I'd ought to do awful well. If we can just get Lum to pay attention to business, why, you fellas stand a chance to make some money with this show, Abner, just to show the world. We done a good business there at Belleville, and yesterday and the day before there at Charleston was both good days, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're doing a big business now. We could just get any money ahead while we'd be all right. 
Well, of course, I'm not handling that end of it now, Abner. I don't know how you're coming out, but you ought to be clearing some money, though. Well, I'm standing as fast as it comes in. Like them new poster that he got out. Yes, well, I, I believe that he made a mistake there. He's given to Nora and her bareback riding act top billing over all the other acts. While Animal Act and the Elephant Act ought to be featured in a building, you know, that'll get more people than anything. Well, she more than likely put him up to that herself. That picture of her standing there on the back of a horse. He never said, but I, I know in reading it, that costs a side of money to get them things printed up or, or drawn or whatever it is they do to them. Oh, yes, yes. Those things cost money, Abner. They sure do. And I never seen no reason for him having his picture put on them poster neither. He ain't no traction that I know of. Well, I believe now, uh, yeah, uh, there comes Lum now, Abner. Oh, if he'd do anything she'd tell him to makes me so dad blame mad I can't hardly stand it at all. Yes, I know, Abner. I sympathize with you on it, but you know a man in love like Lum, why, there just ain't no organ with him at all. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen. You're supposed to be out front there selling tickets, Lum. Why, it ain't time. Well, I was one too, good. <laughs> the time just flies by, it looks like. Yes, uh, there's a big crowd around there waiting to get in the tent, Lum. Well, sir, I'm glad I found you fellas together. I've got a great idea I want to talk over with you. Yeah, some other way of spending some money, I reckon. Well, it'll cost a little something, but it'll be worth it. Uh, what's that, Lum? Uh, what have we got in mind? Well, I was just back there thinking to myself while ago, sort of talking with uh, Genora. Oh, you know them uh, horses Genora rides. Goodness sakes, I figured it'd be something about her. That Now, wait a minute. You ain't heard what I got to say yet. It got to where I can't mention her name without you getting mad about it. Well, that's all you talk about, Lum, is Zenora. Zenora. The trouble with you is you just don't know her, Abner. Don't know what a fine little woman she is. Well, uh, what, what is sense? she started to tell about, Lum? Oh, yeah. yeah Why... Well, you know, uh, Zenori knows the show business. Have you ever uh, just sat right down and talked to her just right straight from the shoulder? Well, I know she's old-timer in the game, Lum. She's been in this business a long time, yes. Well, I wouldn't say a long time. You know, she ain't but 18 years old. Well, she told me that herself. Yes. <laughs> well, that's uh, to be seen, Lum. I don't know. You know, they never do run her age up as high as it ought to be. But uh, she ain't no spring chicken, I'll tell you that. Oh, Aww. she's pretty. Prettiest yeah. little thing i ever seen in my life. Yeah, but she'll never see 18 again, neither. Don't never let her fool you on that. Well, that ain't what I started to tell you about. Uh, what I want to talk to you fellas about is some new harness for them horses. A uh, new harness? Yeah. What's the matter with the harness they got? Well, of course, it's getting kind of old, Abner. I was uh, talking to her, and she sort of sided in with me on it. It'd be a good idea to get some silver harness for them horses. Some silver harness. Yeah, with jewels in it. Oh, Diamonds and stuff like that. Well, uh, Lum, now, the only time that uh, she uses any harness to speak of is in the parade, you know. And That's I... what I say. Now, just think how nice that look in the parade. Well, yes, it, it looks nice, Lum, but now you get to buying that harness like that and putting uh, jewels in it. Now, that runs up into a lot of money. Well, I just allowed as long as we're going to put up them big electric signs over the tent and all about... Going to put up what? Oh, that's right. I ain't told you about that, Al. Oh, I reckon well, me and her's going to rig up some big electric signs to put up over the tent. Uh, what uh, what kind of signs, Lum? Oh, Zenora, the bareback rider, and stuff like that. Well, now, Lum, now, just a minute now. Uh, uh, it just seems to me like that uh, you're spending too much of time building Zenora now. Uh, them elephants and that uh, lion act there, that'll get more people into the circus tent than the bareback riding act will. Well, now, that ain't what Zenora told me. Well, I don't care what she told you. That's why I just write about it. Well, now, we're going to have the signs in the harness, and I don't want no argument about it. I'm just telling you what we're going to do. Well, uh, of course not. Stay out of here, Cedric. This ain't no place for you. This is a circus going to you and Abner, but uh, if I was you now, Lum, I wouldn't be spending my money here as fast to take it in because there's going to be times when you have bad weeks and uh, you need some money to tide you over, you know. you got to think about that. I've been studying about that. Well, Lum, let's talk about that some other time. If you're going to open up the ticket office, why, well, you better get started. Everybody be leaving, going back home on you. Yeah, hey, you better get around there, Lum. Uh, I'll go along with you and start ballahooing. Well, I've got to get the money out of the safe here to make change with. Well, you don't need no change, do you? Can't you make change with what you take in? Mm, supposing somebody pulls a $5 bill on me right the first, then what am I going to do? Yeah, that's right. I never thought about that. Yeah, it's, it's ought to have a little change in the drawer to start out with, Lum. Danny, that just reminds me, too. I aim to make a deposit this morning at the bank. 
take the money in there and took in Saturday and Sunday over to Charleston. Yeah, they oughtn't to leave too much cash around this wagon this way, Lama. Lama will get stuck up sometime. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, all he <laughs> thinks about the North. I he never can recollect that, that combination. Put the dollar on North and turn it to the right, clean over to 70, and then back to 20. Yeah, back to 20. And uh, then to the right to 45, Lum, and then back to 70 again. Yeah, that ought to open it. Forty-five and back to seventy. Yes, yes, there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just take about twenty dollars in change. Man, I still don't believe you need none in there. Let's see, I put that in the shoe box. Wait, is I? Well, what's the matter, Lum? I right, granny, did, did one of you fellas take that money out of here? Now, don't be looking at me, Lum. I'll never take it. It's none. gone. We've been robbed, men. We've been robbed. Huh? We're the only ones that knows the combination on this safe. Somebody opened it up and took that money out of here. I know for... Well, this looks like an inside job, all right. But who took the money? Ladies and gentlemen, before our time's up, let's slip over to the Haskin home. I think it's breakfast time. Oh, Jack! Yes, that's Mary calling to her husband now. Listen. Oh, Jack, breakfast! Go ahead, Mary. I don't want much. You don't want much? Why? What's the matter? Oh, I didn't sleep again. Well, I can believe that. You look terrible. You're good. I feel terrible. What supper you ate? Supper, my eye. I haven't slept for weeks. Well, it must be something. I guess it's me. I just have to put up with it. And grouch at me? Not if I can help it. Well, what do you suggest? A month's vacation? Now, don't get silly. No, I've got an idea. Mm. You know what Lom and Abner say? What? Well, they say, or rather, Carlton Brickett, their announcer, says, that a glass of Horlick's malted milk, hot, just before going to bed. Helps you get to sleep much quicker. And helps you sleep more soundly? Sure, I've heard him say that. Well, that's the solution. You mean... That's it. You're going to have a glass of Horlicks tonight, just before you go to bed. You know, that sounds like a good idea to me. I'm going to take you up on it. Bring home a package when you're out today. And it is a good idea, too, for sound, restful sleep. A glass full of Horlicks, hot, just before going to bed. Can't be beaten. Get a package of Horlicks. You'll find scores of other uses for it. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley, who now bid you all good night and good health.